So many of you have left comments on my videos on how I proceed every day and what tools do I use during the day, my main go-to tools. So I, I thought I would take this morning as my guys are setting up the job to show you what are the most common tools that I need, tools without which I couldn't do my job. These are the basic tools that I go to on average. In other words, I may not use this every day, but on average, I need it. And so, I will first show you the container in which all of my tools come. When I got this thing, it was on my body. And then, I wound up needing too many things that got heavy, so I just bring it to the job like this, and I leave it there, okay? This was about $20. And so, what are the main tools? The number one tool that you'll use as a wallpaper installer is the knife. Please uh, zoom in, okay? Now, I will show you the various knives that I have. You can get these on the online paint store or the wallpaper store online. And these will go for about $10 a piece. I'm not crazy about this one, although a lot of wallpaper installers use them. You see this thing? You can take off outlet covers, switchblade covers with this thing. You can open up cans of paint. It's a very versatile Ulfa knife. O-L-F-A. But it's not my favorite. My favorite are these that I get at Sherwin-Williams. They're from American Line, L-I-N-E. And you simply take this off, you pull out the blade, you put a new one on. You'll see that it comes with a storage blade. that doesn't come out. Usually when you drop it, it does. Um, I'm not gonna risk getting cut. <clears throat> but it comes with a storage knife. What I don't like about this is that I wash my, my, uh, my blades off frequently. This can get rusty. And you don't wanna be cutting wallpaper with rusty blades. Anyway, there is a compartment where you can store them. And so, you just pop the blade on, put this thing back in. You're literally ready back in business in about one minute. I like that. <clears throat> this is a DeWalt. It's a little heavy, a little heavy and hard on the finger. It, it hurts opening this up. I keep it just in case, you know, it's one of those things. And of course, this is an Olfa, O-L-F-A, small, very lightweight, very versatile tool. It's easy on the hands, okay? You can move it around, and uh, it, you're not going to drop this too much. This thing is heavy. This weighs. Not, see, I, it's a little heavy on the hands. <clears throat> but these are by far the biggest tools that I use, the, or the most frequently used tools, okay? These are the blades. Okay, so I'll put them here. The second <clears throat> most widely used tool, I, sh I should go over these cases. So if the blades are the most widely used tools, so are the replacements, okay? They come in a little box. Every now and again, take a little WD-40, humidity gets in there. Once these blades rust, this is 20 bucks, throw it in the garbage. You don't wanna be cutting wallpaper with rusty blades. Okay, so, now I do want to show you this. Olfa, this is the company that makes these, these uh, blades that I've shown you. They have um, a very unique disposable system where you just open this up, you stick your blade in here, and you just break it off and it, it gets stored. Um, 
you don't want to be in a customer's house, especially in a house, and the mother finds your blades on the floor. Bad news. With dogs and children walking around, it's bad for business. So this is a great tool to get with the blade. You, you, you open up the blade, you break off your knife, and it goes right into this. It's a garbage container. Okay. The most, you can't do the job without this. Secondly, I like this for thick vinyl. Why? It's 10 inches. Okay, it covers a lot of space. Very sharp. If you do this with paper, you can rip the paper. So you want to pick and choose your smoothing devices. Vinyl, not only, but mostly just for vinyl. One of our main go-to tools, okay? We use this to smooth out paper, vinyl, whatever. You'll see that it's limited in size and therefore may slow you down. This is seven and a half inches. But this is what you'll see a lot of installers using. This is not a, a uh, flimsy piece of plastic. It's very firm. And when it gets scratched up and rough, you take sandpaper, you smooth it off, ready to go again. If you're in the bad habit, as I am, of cutting your wallpaper with this on the wall, as you've seen in my videos, you may scratch the surface. If you scratch it significantly, throw it in the garbage. Can't use it anymore. Believe it or not, you can use these to smooth out commercial grade wallpaper. It's quick. It's got the handle. It's easy on your wrist. If your wrist gets tired, you can use your finger. Look. And you could go this way or this way. Here's what I suggest you do. You take tape, put it on the edge like you see me having here, and then go to go to smoothing out your commercial grade wallpaper. Just get rid of the sharp edges. A lot of guys don't do it, but um, <laughs> if you can cut wallpaper with this, you can cut it with this. It just gets all the air out, the, most of the air, the air that we all know comes with commercial grade wall covering because it's so thick, it traps a lot of air, it's very wide. You wanna go quick, you move along with this. Okay, this is also good for cutting your wallpaper. Right up against here. You just use this and it goes quickly. I'm not crazy about using it on my wallpaper because it's sharp. And if you're moving quickly, right through the wallpaper. But, guys use them. You can never have enough smoothers. Again, these are the firm ones, okay? This is from Shoreline. All right. I love this one. And this is what I use in most of my videos. I bought about 30 of these at about a dollar a piece or whatever from PPG. Okay, um, this is a great tool. Again, it's, it's a quicker one than the others because this one is nine inches, very firm. I would compare it to the versatility of this and it doesn't have the sharpness of this. So this is, Highly recommended. Okay. So those are the most important tools right there. After that comes the tape measure. You can never have enough tape measures at the job. Now I also have a laser level, uh, I'm sorry, a laser uh, tape measure, but um, I don't want to bring an $80 tape measure to the job with glue all over it. So I tend to just use these. these this is as cheap as they come. This is about 10 bucks. This is about $20, $25, the Milwaukee. But when you're using it for wallpaper, this is all sticky. You got to open it up, 
clean it uh, after the job and let it dry open. Otherwise, that gets rusty. And if you cut yourself rusty, you got more problems, right? Okay. So there's your tape measure. Now I'm thinking in terms of the job. And then I think, oh, I got, I have uh, switch plate covers. So now I need one of these. A little versatile uh, screwdriver. Okay, comes with a Phillips and a flathead. Very versatile tool. This is also, without these two in there, you can use this to turn, um, to turn the, uh, I can't think of the name of it, but the ones where you just go right up to it. This is actually a driver, okay? So, there you have that. In the order of importance, um, so here's, you see, like I said, you can never have enough of these, uh, of these tools. And my preference, really, are the smaller blades with the black metal. When you're cutting wallpaper, you always want to use a very thin blade. If you use the, um, the white metal, stainless steel, they're thicker than these black metal blades. Very sharp, okay? So what about smoothing? You don't always want to use this, okay? These are garbage, and I don't suggest that you use them because picture rolling on very fine wallpaper, right? Watch this. You're going up and down on the thing, you look up. This is gonna cut right through your wallpaper. I don't recommend you using this. This is for the guy and the gal who go to the store and say, Let's hang wallpaper this weekend. Garbage. Okay. Now, very important tool here, okay? Very versatile. You can get in areas that are very tight, especially around molding. You wanna hold your wallpaper down. You wanna fill in little, uh, uh, you can put plaster on your hand. You know, it's very versatile. If your tools get rusty or grimy like this, take your palm sander, turn them over. You got a, a little downtime on a job, get out your circulus, your orbital sander, sand these tools off. Just a minute on each side. You will sharpen them by doing that. So you know you have to be aware of what you're doing, but it's a great way to get all the dirt off of them. This is so important on every job, okay? Of course, it can smooth out wallpaper. I, w I don't use it for that. A lot of installers use them for cutting their edges. I don't like using metal for that. But when you gotta fill in patches, I like using the six inch. This is a six inch knife. Um, very good tool to have on the job. So that was, that's all of our uh, spackling tools and smoothers our knives. I started talking about the roller. This is a, a seam roller. You don't always want to roll your seams. Picture a tire on a vehicle going over mud. What's on each side of this thing? Track marks of the mud, right? This is to be used sparingly. I would say on stubborn vinyl or on a corner. When you make your track mark, you simply take your rubber smoother. It's good to get to dis displace the glue underneath the seam so that the two parts become one, okay? But it's not a tool that you, you don't have to roll your seams. Even though your directions say roll the seams. Don't do that. <clears throat> okay. If you ever have had need for a stud finder, because your customer, oh, I gotta put the mirror back up, and you, this is generally something uh, uh, with which you can find a stud in the wall, even metal ones, okay? But there are other devices such as magnets that you can use 
to find your screws and they literally stick to the screw head behind the sheetrock. This has become obsolete with some tradesmen, but I still carry it to the job just in case I need it. Really, if I want to find a stud, I just use a mirror. You just look in the mirror and um, you, might, you might find yourself. You might uh, yourself find a stud. I don't know. Okay. So, these tools, I call them with my helpers, dental tools. Okay, when you are in a corner, something's not right with the wallpaper, right? Let's make believe this is wallpaper on the wall. You take your finger in there, can't get it up. Something's going on underneath it. You got a spit ball. I call them spit balls. It's a, a clump of glue. Look at this. See that? Never rips the paper. You do it delicately, you get the, otherwise you can't get the paper up, especially in corners. You may what's called sink your corners. If you have to cut your corners and then one of the edges sinks because the corners is wavy, you gotta get in there. And you can either use the hook or the 90. You get in there, you don't like something, lift it up, get your finger in there. You gotta have these couple of dollars at Harbor Freight or wherever. Who makes them? I don't know. Okay, this is a modified smoother. If you look, I simply cut down my eight inch because there are areas when you have a wall here and something here, you just need a smaller, a sm a smaller device, right? You may find that handy. Okay. Moving right along. So, where did this go to? <clears throat> Let's talk about writing devices. You can never have enough pencils, okay? You wanna mark your, your wall covering top, bottom. Very important that you mark it or make lines where you want to make the cut. If you paint, what happens at the end of the day when you've used three colors? You have a tray, possibly two trays, a brush, you wrap it up with plastic. Ceiling, you may have a color that looks like the ceiling. You help with starts, he's putting uh, molding paint on the ceiling. Ceiling. And it even writes in Spanish, okay? Ceiling and techo. That's a joke. Okay, obviously you can't have enough writing devices. Somebody calls you, hey, I need you to come over to here. Boom, you got the pen, you write it. Hammer, I have a better hammer than this, but, um, and it's longer. But it's a great tool to uh, bang in little screws that are sticking out. Even screws, I bang them in. Most of these jobs are either nails or screws. Both, you just hammer them right in. If you wanted to go real gentle on a wall, you could either use one of your smoothers. Let's say you're in a bind, you wanna get out of the job real quick. You know if you hit the wall with this, you're gonna dent it. You will not dent the wall if you disperse the impact with something like this, okay. Okay, so we got our magic markers. Magic markers are important. You wanna mark your products. Do not use any of these permanent markers on or near wallpaper. If you think you're writing on the, on the shell or, you know, you got a roll of wall covering and you're just gonna write on the shell, it might bleed through the next one and the next one. Be very careful. A hook. So you got a little, you're on a ladder, you have a little bucket of glue. And so you want to uh, hold on to your glue safely, right? So put that on your ladder, got a little glue in there with a brush. This is a very versatile brush. 
it's not as old as it looks. Very good, pretty angle sash brush. Clean it up, you can paint with it. I dip into my glue, I get a little dry in the corner, boom. This is safely on my ladder. Brings me to the, to the angle sash brush. Angle meaning three inch angle. This is an, everything's an angle. But this is called an angle sash brush. Very versatile tool. You can apply glue with it in corners, near your ceilings, baseboard, and you can also paint with it. Okay. This bucket fits into Warner ladders. You see the two holes here? There's nothing like being on a ladder. Putting this, this, and it all falls off. You want a bucket, you're moving fast with your hands. You're grabbing stuff, you wanna use, you wanna use this tool. This is one of my least frequently used tools, okay? I don't cut a lot of things uh, like boxes. I'll just simply go to my other blades, but hey, I like the way it looked, so I got it. Okay, so you're painting, you're also using your brush for glue, and then if you wanna take care of this thing, $6, this is a brush comb. Look at its versatility. So, it combs out the brush when you've, you're getting gunked up, okay? Uh, you can also, if you're stripping paint off of something rounded, you can use it for that. But also the roller, gets all the paint off of the roller, okay? Right into your paint uh, can. Sometimes we got staples around carpeting, carpeting that we need to pull out to hang our wallpaper near um, trim. These are very, very good tools to use for that reason. Okay. This duplicates the, the uh, this tool in that it has a blade that comes out. Okay. It also duplicates it with cleaning off your rollers from the paint, but the other one can't be used to patch. And also, this can penetrate your paint cans. If you wanna make a little tunnel around the circular track underneath the rim to simply penetrate holes in the lip of the can so that when you're cleaning off your brush, the paint falls in and this is the tool that you simply take your little hammer and you penetrate the rim of the paint can so the refuse paint or the salvageable stuff drips back into the can. Okay, so I like that. This is a nifty little way to hold it. Or you can clip it onto your belt right here. When you're over a doorway, you don't have the length of this level in order to determine whether or not your paper is plumb, you're gonna to have to resort to these less reliable tools and simply use this over doorways and closets. Whenever you can, you, you, the rule is you use a longer level. It's the better reading. And so this is my second go-to. And the third one is right here. This yellow level, that's a 48 inch. That's the one you wanna use when you're hanging eight foot drops. You put it right around the middle of the drop, that'll give you an idea of whether or not you're straight. Okay. When you're hanging natural fabric, you get frayed edges. Go right up to it. And it takes, it, takes off the little um, strings and, and uh, also the little pills, the little balls sometimes on grass cloth. If first, I don't like the way that looks. Take it right off with this. You wanna use it first so that it becomes a little dull. You, you use a brand new blade on grass cloth, you're gonna be replacing it. So it's gotta be a little used, okay? Scissors, 
obviously for cutting paper in corners. If I were wrapping this corner here, I get this little, what I use, do most of the time is simply push the paper down in the corner, cut it open with this. But you can also do this. If your paper's like this, you just go right up to it. it takes you right to the corner, you see? Okay, what else can I show you? You're using brushes. You really wanna keep your stuff clean. This is a uh, wire brush for paint brushes. This is not to be used too much on the ends. If you damage the ends of this, if you look closely at a paintbrush, there are little flags on the edges of each bristle. And they point in, it's just like a flag. If you damage those flags with this, your edges will not be very precise. This wire brush is basically when the paint gets gunked up in here. You hold it on a steady surface, and you clean off the, the area here. Some guys, they put tape here to prevent the paint from getting stuck here. Others wet it before they use it. They literally wet it, do this in the sink, and leave it moist throughout the day. So this is part and parcel to painting. This tool is for the cleanup. A lot of times people have hoses and they don't have one of these jet stream gadgets to put on the hose. And so you simply put this on the hose. I have one on the truck, a hose that I use 10 to 15 feet long for when the customer doesn't have a hose. Back to cutting devices. This is a great tool. Uh, I use this with my straight edges. This opens up. You put a straight edge in here, close it. Now you have the thinnest blade known to man. Very dangerous way to single edge. But what I like about it, it extends the, uh, the action so your hand is away from the blade and you're holding on to your cutting device. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Very versatile tool, okay? This is a tool I got on the um, online paint store, okay? I don't know what I paid for it. I think it was something like $40. Every now and again, you have to sand, sand it down to get any little burrs off of it that might happen if, if it should fall. But for the most part, it's a straight, beautiful metal straight edge, and you can use it to cut long sections. The benefit of using this and not a yardstick, a metal yardstick, does anybody see the difference? If you use a yardstick, let's make believe this is a yardstick. I can slice my hand. This removes my hand from the action. The downside is that this slides unless you put something sticky on the bottom. Okay, you know what I was thinking of using on this? You know the little uh, material that they put under rugs, like you have an Arioga an 8x5 in your living room, and you put that, that rubbery substance? I was just going to glue that substance to here. I haven't done it yet. Okay, so we covered all of this. This is for my fire. This is my torch, my uh, igniter. This can go into any Coleman uh, lighter or a, uh, my flame, my torch that you get at Walmart or whatever. And uh, it's, it's about six, seven dollars. So I keep it in my pouch <coughs> just in case I need fire. So I've covered all of the tools, the levels. I have three grades of levels. I mentioned them, I should show you. This is the one you wanna use on eight foot drops or longer, this one. This one's very versatile. If you drop them, you have to check for their calibration. You may have to get rid of them. Um, and then uh, I have incentive tools that I keep in my pouch um, for my workers. Uh, I, sometimes I use these. These are very good to keep workers happy. Or this one, 
Each of them has about 45 calories in them. This one is a great tool, and this one. Uh, so these are really good. And you have to get rid of them after every three to six months because sometimes they go bad, and uh, guys get upset if you hand them uh, expired candy. Let's take you to the setup. On every job, you want access to a four foot ladder and a six foot ladder. Basic. This is your basic ladder right here. Why do I do this? It's light. If you get the orange one, your, your back is going to hurt. You want to get a light ladder that you can move like this. And that's from Werner. Put your name on it too because on commercial jobs, guys like to say, oh, I had a green ladder. I took it. Happened to me. So I took their green six foot ladder. After telling the GC I was taking it. Okay. So, so here's the setup. Here we are. One of my uh, viewers yesterday said, hey, do a video on setting up the job. This is your basic uh, small pasting machine, okay? And so I have a video on how to use it. No need to go through that. But you need to be pulling it through and resting the material on a table. This is your basic table from uh, Walmart. Now, I have a professional wallpaper table with trestles. I don't have the time to put lacquer on it, so I want to coat it first before I start getting wallpaper glue all over this very fine wood. Okay, it's basswood, and I'm not putting glue on it until I coat it with lacquer. I pull my paper out, pull it up to here, and then I simply rest the finished product right up against here. So I'll put sheet number one, sheet number two, three, four, five. This way I know to go to this one first because it's been waiting the longest. And so, now let me also say, sometimes I don't get the machine out. You come back for a repair or something like that. I'm not taking that machine out. I'll show you what I do. I might use the machine to simply organize my paper, pull it out, and then roll the glue on with this. And so I'll just use the machine to kind of help me along the job, where it just stores the paper, spools it for me, and then I just roll it with the, with the, uh, with the roller. One or two sheets, whatever. This thing takes a half an hour to clean out. So if I don't need it for a long time, I'll use it just to pull my paper out, glue it, and simply cut it and, and do, like I said, leave it near the machine in order, numbered order. On a small bathroom job, this was the video I did two days ago, and, I, and it was entitled, Why You Want to Hire a Professional Installer. So we take off the door. This is a small, we're big guys. We don't want to be banging into a door. Take the door off. This is, if any of my customers watch this video, you have to understand what goes into these jobs. I have no desire to go to your house and give you a subpar performance. You're going to get, I want to show you this. This is what you're getting when you hire me. Do you not see the perfection in this surface? This is perfection. There's no divots, there's no nothing. Before I hang the paper, I'm going to inspect the work of my workers to make sure that I cannot feel anything because the rule in paper hanging is if you see it, if you feel it, you'll see it when the paper's over. Okay? And so there you have it. Obviously, just as an aside, you don't hang paper on this. This gets wiped down with a wet cloth. Then it gets sealed. Not primed, but sealed. Got to use a sealer. Okay, let me just show you this. This is a time saver. You're on a job, you got a couple of spots that you don't think your glue is going to stick to. This is a water soluble primer. Makes the, makes the, um, the glue stick to it. This is just for spot. You know, you have an uneven surface or you have torn sheet rock. You put that on it, you wait two, three minutes, just a little, just to get this to cover the surface. Then you coat it with plaster, 
a joint compound, and then you seal it. And I seal it mostly with a product from Zinser called Guards, G-U-A-R-D-S. There you have it. This is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper and Painting. Thanks for watching my channel. Please let me know what you think. A lot of you are giving me advice and suggestions on how you do it. I'm incorporating all of them. Every time I get a suggestion, it's usually something I needed to know. Thank you from all of you guys in the UK, all across the USA who are writing into me, letting me know. I really appreciate it and uh, I, I have incorporated it. One of the guys asked me, hey, don't mention my name, but I really wish I could. He, he sent me this nice tool and I'm using it. It's an awesome tool. The guy created his own tool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.